they should this weekly schedule. Like I said, ones I want to highlight for West Side. We're gonna, mon- Monday, Wednesday. Last week was a bit weird since we had some uh, some other troubles. Um, but I think every other group is the same, though. So I don't know if this this one. Uh, no, I put that Friday thing in there. Um, so I, okay, I, I think we should. I'm proposing we should do a Friday whole group this week at Lamar. All right. Okay. Um, skill stuff, programming, you, uh, we'll do the usual thing. For CAD, the main thing we focus on right now is getting all the electronics sorted, uh, mainly their layout and how we're going to connect them to the robot itself. Uh, mechanical, need to make the, the a lot of most of the gussets have been cut out they just have to be finished in the structure uh, we've cut all the main pieces just the main thing we need to make was the the top structure for the every for the the arm cool updates the metal that we cut was at Lamar for the structure on the side I think Somos still working on the intake. I saw yesterday. It looked pretty. It looked pretty nice. Um, he also worked on April tags. Said Canada as usual. Uh, I'm doing the top arm structure. We didn't get a lot. We didn't get. We barely got anything done. I don't even get. I don't even got anything done last week actually, because of the. We get some trouble getting access to our stuff. Um, Carnegie. Uh, I think they're doing programming stuff as usual. Uh, some goals. Andy, would you like to talk about this? Yeah, I just added this slide. Um, I think we should aim for Saturday to try to get the drivetrain and electronics. It doesn't have to be perfect, but to pretty much have everything that we need in there. It might not work, but it's to a point where we feel like this is pretty locked out. And um, I actually put a Sunday in here where we take the drivetrain components and possibly the every arm components, we take them to the Ehlers garage and we powder coat on Sunday um, so we can do a full assembly basically by the next week. Um, I'll, I'll put more details in here. I, I need to flesh this out and I'll, I'll keep it in the slides, but we need to start setting a goal of where we want to be. And I think every bot arm, I think if you guys keep putting work into it, you'll have most of it all complete by, uh, by Saturday. So. All right. And we have the, we have all the pieces now with all the, with the intake stuff that we got. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, to, uh, pretty much flush it out. That's going to take some time, but I think if you guys keep working on it and work hard, you can have most of the pieces all put together on uh, by Saturday, right? So. Mm-hmm. I I don't really rolls. Uh, I don't think any change, but but that's fine. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll go. you can keep rolling through the slides. Uh, this build schedule. I, I just need to think more about where we what's realistic. So. Okay. Uh, I don't think anything changed in the roles. Um, I'll probably be doing. I'll probably be leading more of the Sunday meetings. Uh, yeah, I think Guys, otherwise. Shirt. I think we're gonna order same. shirts this week. That's the goal: is to order the first shirts. I think they're ready. Uh, I think most of these awards have been submitted, right? Because I know. Engineering is done already. Impact is due very quickly. Impact, I think it's done. Impact is due, so. 16th, right? Yeah, so help, help out if you need, if you want to, but we need to read through all the stuff for typos and submit the impact this week. All right. Um, Sid, I'm going to make you talk. Okay, um, so this week has been kind of slow uh, for me because of schoolwork 
and also just in general for meetings at Westside because our meetings have kind of cut off early because we haven't like our teacher sponsor got COVID. So hopefully Mr. Ascendis, I know you're here. I hope you're feeling better, but you're on mute by the way. I'm feeling better guys. I'm not a hundred percent, but uh, I should be there tomorrow. Awesome. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to get to electrical and getting like a simplified belly pan out. So what Carl and I were talking about uh, yesterday was we could have two belly pans, uh, one that's a fourth inch steel, and then one that's an eighth inch steel that combines to be uh, three eighths of an inch thick. And then we can adjust the weight based on how much weight we have other places. And if need be, we can always add more weight to that. So what I'm going to deal with is making the belly pan and CAD simpler, like fewer contours and whatnot. And then we can send that over to Carl or if we have someone to cut out sheet metal um, to them and get those two things cut out so that we can start building up our actual chassis. And in addition to that, we do have a new plan for electronics, like a rough sketch. Um, so we're going to start working on that with like new cable management for the sort of modules and uh, and stuff like that. And then just updates to the MasterCAD dealing with like intake motion and whatnot. But I think that depends on how the intake team does this week. Yeah, we have to be very careful about machining things on large steel plates. We don't really have great resources unless Carl has something I don't know about, but um, definitely run whatever you're going to do through Carl to see how he recommends doing it. Um, so send a screenshot as soon as possible to get his feedback. Otherwise, he might tell you you have to redo some stuff um, when you get too far along. So. Okay. Um, I'll get, yeah, I think Carl, his suggestion was to simplify the belly pin so that it'd be easy to make. And then I'll get some of the details sorted out tomorrow and, and get that to you guys. Yeah, at this point, guys, all the changes, try to get it up on screenshots of CAD so everybody can see it really quickly on what we're going to try to do. And you'll get quick feedback, and hopefully you won't waste a lot of time going down the wrong path. Um, even if you aren't quite complete just post what you think you have and we'll make sure it's on the right track and we, we got to get the CAD as finalized as possible at least for a version one design that we can just build as is and have a functional robot um would anybody else like to talk before uh the recording's cut off. Sawmill, any idea, ideas on your intake? We'd like to hear what your plans are. Um, currently, like, I was uh, obviously absent from the last meeting, so I'll have to catch up on what new things were done and uh, look through all that. But currently, the uh, design looks very promising, especially after the we put it on with a real motor. So... I suspect there will probably be no major changes. The only main thing is like, if on the master CAD, Siddharth, you find something that the intake is taking up too much volume or the geometry is a little bit different, then, uh, you know, obviously I can try to change the four bar geometries since I just copy pasted the ones from the old version. So there's many like infinite possibilities there that I could put for the linkage. All right. Yeah, I would take a look at the uh, on shape. Um, my computer. I'm not at home for this week, so I'm gonna be a little slower in terms of CAD. But I'll try and get my stuff done. Of course. Yeah. I think for now the CAD it looks uh, fine because that every bot arm leaves a lot of space in that area. But then as we move on and if we want like special things such as the launcher and all, then 
we might run into so the space issues. So that's when we can make some uh, minor to medium modifications. Okay. Also, I would recommend exporting the edits I made in Onshape to Fusion so that you could take a look and mess with that if you're going to change stuff on the intake. Of course, yeah. Samuel, I recommend you start really thinking about what you're making is going to be a finalized version, meaning it's going to have holes for motors, it's going to have maybe some extra holes for mounting things, support, you know, protective brackets. Um, so really take what you have and make it into something that's very finalized. Um, we could even put uh, lightning patterns in it that you could, you know, cut all out on the laser cutter and, and if we need to, we can try to match it up on a plastic plate and do match drilling or something on it. Got it, yes. I will look, take a look at that. And, and post a screenshot of something that you think is you're going to make on the laser cutter and we can look through it and see if it has enough of the motor holes because I think the motor that we have is an option but maybe there's a simpler option and Sid's talking about using like a Neo option so we can look at a few different things and we can just have different motor holes so if we want to put our the brush motor that we have in there right now or if we want to put a Neo in later we can just have that flexibility and just all have it in the plate it's, it seems minor, but it, it takes a lot of time to think about all these changes and get them all in, in the design. Of course, yeah. Greg, are you going to make any changes to the Everybot arm, or are you guys just going to build it as is, essentially? We're just going to build it as, as is right now. Um, I think the most important part is we get it, like fully built first before we do anything. Any like changes to the geometry? Have you investigated about your motor? Are you gonna do we have enough chain to, to chain up the motor and whatnot? I don't know. I think I expect that. Uh I don't I don't think we uh, I don't think there's any uh, changes that we have to make right now. We have a lot, we have a lot of chain. Uh, at least for the arms, we don't have that the so. arm we're probably gonna go with the normal mounting system um, uh, the motor the, the, the gearbox part we're just gonna we have a sim sport that we're gonna use instead but at least where the motor placement is we're just gonna put it where it's normally is at least for now because uh, this the, the I think the idea said posted where the chain is going down is concerning to me. Uh, and, yeah. and you guys have, it's 25 chain, right, that that they have in the design? You guys have all that at Westside? Um, we have a I bunch so. of 35 chain, for sure. So I'll check if we have 25, but we should because we had a bunch of it on our 2020 robot. Okay. Um, so the sim sport is not going to conflict with the way the everybot unfolds if we don't have a 90 degree is that is that correct um yeah i i yeah. believe that what you can do is just mount it with the thrifty bearing plate that we used on our last year's robot um but we would need like a gearing reduction which we can work on spacing and stuff I think that's good math for you guys to to know kind of what the rough RPM output is from the original EveryBot design, and then do the calculations and see what your output speed is from a sim sport, and present that so everyone can read it and understand how close it is. Because um, if the RPM is significantly different, you might have to do some differences with sprocket sizes or potentially just need another reduction somewhere. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's been the, the main thing we've been investigating for the gearbox stuff. Well, don't waste too much time on it. Is the, 
where do we want the reduction? Throw the numbers out on what it is currently, and then in the original design, and then put your numbers out there, and it won't take long, too long. I mean, I, I could probably look at your numbers and tell you within five minutes if you're on the right track or if you're way off. So don't don't waste too much time if you're stuck somewhere. We mm -hmm. it should be a pretty simple math exercise. Okay. I mean, for a lot of you guys, uh, you know, there's a lot of VEX people out there that have already done these motor ratios, but you guys, you know, most of your VEX motors are going to run at 100 RPM straight, right? So when you start changing gear ratios, let's say you do a 2 to 1, well, then you can reduce that 100 RPM to 50 RPM, right? That's a sim simple idea. FRC motors have very strange RPM values that you have to look up in a table, like 5,000 RPM, and you have to do pretty massive reductions, like 50 to 1, to get it close to something that's strong enough to do what you want to do. Um, so it's a, it's a lot different than VEX. You can't just quickly throw together a couple of gears and hope that that's going to work. A lot of them are these Versa planetary gearboxes, but they're easy to modify, and if we need to move some stuff around, we can just do the reduction on the planetary gearbox. But it's, it saves a whole lot of time to think about it, get the math right, and not waste time putting stuff together, and then you have it all assembled, and then you quickly find out, oh, this doesn't have enough speed, this doesn't have enough torque, and then you have to redo a lot of stuff. So let's, let's do the math before we start constructing the gearbox. And this goes for the intake. Yeah, we've... Um... All, all mechanisms. We're not just talking about the everybody. So the intake, go look at other teams' math. Go find their RP. Study it. Present a plan of, we found Team XYZ has this RPM that they documented. We plan to produce this RPM, and we've you know, we're already testing at this RPM, and it looks fine. And let's make sure we kind of follow that process on every gearbox that we put on the robot, or else we're going to have the same issues. Make sense? Yes, of course. Yeah. At least for the everybot, um, the everybot team says that uh, the goal should be around 80 to 1 gear ratio. Um, total for the arm. Okay. Yep. Let's let's post that ratio because that, that also has a torque number associated with it, right? So it's eighty to one. Yeah. With an RPM coming out at, with this motor, this gearbox at this torque. If you match RPM and torque exactly with whatever combination you want to have, well, then it should be almost identical. You probably won't. You're going to be somewhere in the ballpark. And it, the question would be, are you close enough to make it work? I see. Um, same thing, Samuel, you probably should put some thought into the four bar mechanism as well on what people are using to raise and lower their four bar with the motor. And we need a gearbox and a motor for that mechanism as well, not just the intake. Forward. Got it. Yeah, one of the ideas that uh, Carl presented to me was that in order to make the intake less breakable, like more compliant and just easier to use would be to actually use a winch system. So like it springs down and then it winches back up using uh, like, you know, cable and pulley yeah. system. If we, so, if we have two positions, I'm perfectly happy with that. Um, yeah, that might be, because the main the main benefit of that would be if it crashes, then we're not fighting against the motor and it's brake mode because the line would just go slack. Yeah, that that's going to take some digging to go find some teams that have done this, so you kind of figure out how you want to do it. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think a lot of teams are, what was it, the Cranberry Alarm maybe had a winch to lower their elevator? Yeah, they, they had one for because they had the elevator at an angle, so they did like that. Yeah, it sounds like a great team to go study what gearbox they used to do something like that. That's probably overkill, 
in terms of what torque that they're using. Exactly. We, we can study it and use a similar method. Of course. Do we have some programmers that want to talk about what they plan to do? I don't know if we have anybody on. Uh, I was just wondering, what is our programming class, like progress right now? I mean, at the moment, I don't think any of the programming team, other than Adrian's on, but um, they've done some vision stuff and they've been working through WPI a little bit west side. I think Adrian could probably tell you more. Yeah, so for the programming team, we've been focusing on, well, at west side mainly, three things. So we, um, we were doing vision. Um, me and Kyle were working on that. Um, and I believe Kyle is the one uh, who's actually most into vision. So we were doing research on, well, we've got all, we've got the um, vision set up working as in we get input from the actual camera and we can get all the uh, data from the April tag, but we're figuring out the best way to use that in and incorporate it into our drive right now. Um, the second thing is we were looking a lot at Shuffleboard actually. So we were finding ways to really use it to its full potential and use all of like little widgets and stuff in order to make a, an actual interface that uh, drivers can use throughout the match that can give them more information, you know, make uh, and pr better things like autonomous switchers and stuff like that. Mm, and of course, third is Swerve Drive. We've been taking a look at some uh, other team Swerve Drive programs in order to um, like enhance our own. So we were actually kind of rewriting that the, and also uh, understanding how the programming, how the Swerve Drive program works more because especially at Westside, not all the programmers, including myself, know fully how, like 100% how the Swerve Drive program works. So we're kind of using other teams programs as a reference as well as uh, write, rewriting the Swerve Drive program in order to you know, get a better understanding of that. But that's where the programming at Westside is at currently. So I, I wonder think we need to port the base Swerve code that we have to the new 2023 charge repository. And this is going to be a placeholder for the robot that we're going to be using with the dimensions that will be on that robot. Um, so somebody needs to, probably you, Adrian, take the code in mini swerve and do a really clean move over to this new repository that we will all look at. And I want to keep it as vanilla as possible, not add any shuffleboard, not add any vision into it. Let's just do a really basic swerve to start out. And I want everyone to look over the code and make sure we understand it. And then as stuff gets tested in mini swerve or some other test repos, we slowly add in code to the you know main disco uh, 2023 repository. So it you know we slowly build into it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So you're saying the base swerve code, uh, we can put that in the you know, 2023 charge repository for now, and then we can add on to it later with all the other um, additions and revisions and stuff like yeah. that. We got to be real careful about having code bloat. We did this last year and it really cost us. We want to put stuff in, test it thoroughly, and we can test stuff outside, but we don't want to make it so complicated that it's breaking stuff and we never really, you know, we never got our autonomous to work very well early in the season it was a big mess so we need to do a better job of kind of slowly adding things in um, without having too much stuff early on but right anyway, we need I, to I talk, agree. talk more on programming um, everybody who wants to do it needs to read the mini swerve repo and then we'll slowly as we as changes get added to the final repo everybody should start carefully reviewing those changes to make sure there's nothing that looks out of the ordinary so we can be completely ready for the robot as soon as it's ready to test. So. 
I did want to ask, I know last, last Saturday, uh, Adrian and I and like Vunch and other people, we saw there was some issues with two of the serve modules. Was that ever like found out the cause? Were we able to switch out the module or is it still there? Um, the mo a module to, to do replacement on. So when he has that one, it should be give you guys something to test on. We can literally do a module swap and see if there's issues with the module. Okay. Like, what was it ever fixed without replacement, or is it still there? No, it's it's still there. We haven't gotten any replacements for the two the two sewer of models that we were suspecting um, that there that, 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 that there was something wrong with. So makes sense. Okay. Yes. Sid way, a, an interesting um, picture about damage on a gear, and I I was thinking more about this. It, a lot about it is calibration. So if, let's say you're running all four modules, run one module, listen to it, run the second module, listen to it. If they sound different, we could have a big issue, like gears grinding or, or doing something really wrong. So I think a lot of it is just how we quickly evaluate each module by itself and make sure they all sound about the same and we don't have any major issues in the module. It's just how, we, how fast we calibrate everything. And so... It's just gonna. You guys have already been doing it, but we gotta come up with really efficient ways to do this. At least for now, I think, uh, from what I saw, nothing is too out of the ordinary with like hardware stuff on the swerve, especially anything with the gears. And I think they all sounded kind of satisfactory, except for that. Uh, what's it called? that one issue I was just talking about with the two sort of modules that we think is related to the motor, not the, the rest of the system. Yeah, maybe there's some magic way we can ramp up the motor, you know, up speed, down speed, just using a program, you know, routine, a test routine, just to see if the motor is, sounds different than the other motors as it goes from, you know, 100 RPM to just have it maybe every 100 RPM, it just ramps itself up and you can listen to the sounds and if it sounds drastically different, then maybe that's how we evaluate the motor is is faulty. But we're we're going to have to do more programming. Adrian and whoever wants to do programming, we're going to probably just have some more meetings kind of like this that we just talk about what we want to do with code and I'm going to take a bigger role to help programming team along because it's, it's a lot of stuff to do. Yep, sounds good. All right. I think we're wrapping up. Anybody else have some other commentary they want to do? We got to work hard. We got a lot of stuff to do, guys, so um, try to uh, attend all the meetings and, and get a lot done and encourage others to keep attending. It, we had a pretty, we had our weakest attendance on Saturday, but we still got some, a lot of stuff done, um, even though we had just a handful of people. Yeah. How many weeks are we? It's four weeks, which of you? Yeah, I, I think ballpark on schedule, we need to be ready by that first week of March to take our robot somewhere to practice on a field, like to Pasadena or to Paraland, go to their full field, run the robot a week before competition at least. And that way we can work out a lot of the issues and feel comfortable going to a competition event in the second week of March. I'll check um, if Paradox or any you know, like I think Crypto is the other one. If they have like, if they have, they're on week one, if they're on week one, they won't, no way they'll, they'll be there to practice, you know? Yeah, let, let me worry about where we want to go. Um, I know all the mentors and I'll just kind of ask around okay. and plan up some dates. Um, you, you guys just focus on robot. Let's get this robot built as quickly as possible. Um, we'll, we'll, we can kind of work out schedule and other things at the same time, but. 